Okay. And basically, these metal containing particulate may serve as a catalyst. Okay. Okay. You follow that? Now, uh, uh, to mention uh, the other point here, as a matter of fact, because when SO2 now, uh, now when the SO2 and H2S are in the air now, then we have what you call atmospheric sulfate, Okay, formed. Okay. Because as you mentioned, because what happened here, these two gases could stay in the air, and basically when they stay, they've been oxidized, and it comes from what you call the atmospheric sulfate. So the atmospheric sulfate, okay, formed by the oxidation. It's formed by the oxidation okay, of SO2 and H2S, which can combine okay, with positively charged ion charged ions, in this case, they are cations. Okay. Uh, to form various compounds. Okay. For that. Now, also to mention, of course, most of these, basically, the atmospheric sulfate, which is most of it for no, known as ammonium sulfate, to mention. Most atmospheric sulfate okay, occurs as a tiny particulates. as a tiny particulates. Uh, most of these are basically what it is, it is the ammonium sulfate, especially okay, ammonium called ammonium uh, sulfate which is basically, this is okay, which is NH4 to SO4. Okay. So we have basically that's what happened in these two gases in the air when they act, they form what you call ammonium sulfate. And ammonium sulfate plus also sometimes okay, what you call ammonium nitrate, these are the two most developed in the air. To mention this point, ammonium sulfate okay, 
is the most okay a prominent component is the most a prominent a component along with ammonium nitrate. Okay, which basically it has this NH4, NO3. Okay. And when they say, when they are developed in the air, these things that basically it would give us what you call the haze in the air, in the air. Okay, look at me. Mention to you now because they they, they develop these fine particulate. Now uh, to mention this point here. Now fine of basically of fine uh, particulates haze. Okay, that often, okay, that often impairs, of course, visibility. Here, visibility in cities. Okay. You follow this point? So basically, give us that haze either in any area, basically, it's okay. Okay. Uh, do you finish from this one now? Now, what happened here sometime, these are two, but also associated with these or could be other particulate which is going to mention it to you now here now also other cations that combine with the sulfate okay other cations that sorry that combine, okay, with sulfate, with all these compounds, sulfate, whether it is a, a what you call, ammonium sulfate or nitrous sulfate, sulfate include, okay, now, include calcium, Okay. Include calcium, uh, which is basically, I think, if you see a two plus, and also include magnesium. Which is Mg also two plus, okay, and also add sodium, which is Na2, Na plus, okay. Just give me a second here. <coughs> Okay, we should go ahead and continue after that. Okay.
Now what happened here, because remember we mentioned the other one which is a negative, but these cation, which is a, 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 a positive, maybe is not enough to balance all these negative of the previous to mention to you here now. Often, okay, uh, there are uh, not enough, okay, of these. Uh, cations of these cations, okay, to balance, okay, all uh, the negative charges okay, of the sulfates. Okay, of the sulfate, whether it is was uh, uh, the ammonium sulfate or the sulfate nitrate, all that of sulfate. Now, what happened in a situation like this? Now to mention all the sulfate, of course, simply to mention they are present there. Now, and the such condition. And the such conditions, okay, what happened here? That hydrogen ion, which is basically H plus here, serve to balance. Okay, serve to balance. Okay, some of the negative charges, okay, and basically what happened here, and when that occurs, this is going to result forming what you call sulfuric acid, and that basically result in the end what we have, what you call this acidic precipitation, to make this point, to some of the negative uh, charges, okay, resulting okay, in what is known as aerosols, okay, uh, containing Sorry, okay, containing sulfuric acid. Uh, if you finish from this one, I'm going to put back here so that you can see this one. Okay, sulfuric acid, which is simply it is the H2SO4. Okay which is, as I mentioned to you, the most important of acidic precipitation. Okay. You got that? So basically that give us what is happening of these, what you call these either the, what you call the SO2 or the H2S when they come in the air and it result when they oxidize and gradually with other particulate result in the end, how finally, how the acidic precipitation are developed. Is that clear? Okay. Any question, please? 
Uh, basically, now I'm going to talk a little bit here because sometimes uh, I've got, uh, between writing and talking so that we can... Read. Now, these I'm just going to talk about now, the sources of SO2 emissions. Subtitle here. Sources of SO2 emissions. Okay. Now, this one I'm going to talk it because I think it's easy, but please let me know if you didn't understand it, okay? Now, of course, one of these sources, we have one, simply is the volcanoes. Which is something is as a natural forces in this case, okay? And this we're going to mention, of course, volcanoes are a natural source of emission of sulfur gases. Okay, volcanoes, as you mentioned too, are natural source of emission of sulfur gases. Okay. Now, usually, basically, on average, usually on average, means these volcanoes emit on average about a 12 million uh, tons of sulfur gases per year. Okay, before that, uh, of these sulfur gases, which is per year, about 90% of it is SO2. Okay, and 10% H2S. H2S, okay. Now, the other source also to mention very simply is basically the wildfire, okay? So basically wildfires, okay? Is also another, uh, what you call natural source of SO2. But wildfire is also a natural source of SO2. The third one, of course, basically is that what you call the activity of a human, which is basically as anthropogenic. So to mention to you this point here, the global anthropogenic emission of SO2 is about or are about okay 142 142 million tons per year Okay, and that is basically almost like three times the natural emission, okay, okay, which is about, okay, a triple the natural releases. Okay. Uh, 
And of course, no need to mention all that. Basically, it comes from the uh, fossil fuel, uh, what you call emission, and also from the cars and so on. So basically, this is all under the what you call the anthropogenic. And you follow this point here. Now, of course, to mention that, as you can see in the figure here, all right, just uh, which is something very natural here, okay, that basically, usually, uh, of course, in all these statistics, uh, most of the time, basically, we use what you call the time of the industrial revolution and onward, okay? So, as you can see from this, it shows to you basically how basically the SO2 basically increasing here. Okay, do sometimes. Okay. And so basically, we talk a little bit about this one here. Okay, so just uh, you can see this one here. Okay, talk about it. Of course, later on, of course, there is a, quite a bit of uh, a procedure has made try to reduce, as you know, this emission of SO2 to mention. Now, uh, and this one I'm going to mention, of course, that anthropogenic emission of SO2. Anthropogenic. Emission of SO2, of course, as I mentioned, have increased okay, since the beginning of the industrial revolution has been increased, of course, say enormously. Okay. Okay, since the beginning of the industrial uh, revolution. Uh, for example, I'm going to mention this point here that uh, during the time of industrial revolution, okay, uh, that for example, during the time of industrial revolution at uh, what you call uh, in 1860, uh, okay, where about, okay, 5 million tons at the time. Produced, of course, SO2. Okay. Compared, okay, with give an example with hundred and fifty million tons, of course, of SO2. This is just, of course, in the year 2000. For that. <clears throat> you finish from this one here? Okay. Uh, uh, Now I'm going to talk about this because I think easier you can follow it here. Now, since this mm -hmm. amount, basically, then most of the government, as a matter of fact, uh, try basically to make use of, of what you call to reduce that emission. And just to mention this point for you. Since then, many countries, especially, I mean, the industrial countries, many countries, since then, many countries, simply going to mention, invested, many countries invested, what is known as in a clean, in a clean air technology, invested in clean 
here. Or technologies. Okay. Of course, in all that basically done in order uh, to reduce, of course, what you call emissions. of the damaging SO2, okay? You follow that? However, in spite of that also, we expect that this emission is going to increase, uh, and especially where are now new countries, like for example, uh, what you call, like China and India and others, and to give you an example of their the their rate of participation of SO2 in the air. Okay, to mention to you this point here. Now, it seems, however, that the future, okay, the global emission Of course, of SO2 and others are bound uh, to increase. Okay, are bound to increase, uh, as I mentioned to you here, bound to increase as we have basically as China and India. Okay. Because these countries basically supply much of their energy okay, needs okay, by burning. Okay, coal and petroleum fuels. Okay, and petroleum. Uh, for example, Okay, to make sure that, for example, in China, that SO2 emission, okay, increased from 10 million, okay, tons, in 1980 okay to almost 200 to 334 million tons okay in 2000 in year 2000 okay For, for this one here, I just give me a second. Okay. Try to. Okay. Now, just to uh, give you something here to talk about this one here, as a matter of fact, a little bit here. Now, 
Okay. Now, for example, in Canada here, uh, to talk about this one. Okay. Uh, about 69% uh, of Canadian emissions of SO4 or SO2, okay, of SO2, okay, are from, okay, large industrial sources, okay, uh, particularly Okay, metal, smelters, okay, while to mention to you here that about 28% from fuel combustion. Okay. Before this, now this one I'm going to read to you. Uh, just what's up in here? Let's sort of see now. What, okay. Okay, you are. Yeah, somebody asking about the second here. Yes, you were, somebody asked about 150 years, but basically that in, you, uh, in the year 2000, the total emission of uh, it was 150 million tons, okay? Because I saw the emission to you here, 150 million tons. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, now, basically, this one I'm going just to read it for you because I think it's uh, easy and you know it. Okay, now, uh, after finishing this one here, okay, now, as you know, because all that basically affecting the human health, and that's why there is a lot of activity to try to reduce it. Now, because of a human health and environmental damages, because of a human health and environmental damages associated with SO2, and also an other pollutant, other pollutant. All right, so what happened here, of course, that most of the industrialized nations try to reduce that emission of the sulfur. To mention this point here, that most in the industrialized nations have acted to reduce emission. Okay. And basically, they manage basically, uh, you can put it down here, basically, in most of these industrialized, uh, say from 1990 till 2005, uh, they managed to reduce it something around between 35 to 37 percent 
of the emission has been reduced. Did you follow that? So as I mentioned to you that uh, uh, basically we call this in this right nation, they try of course to reduce that the emission because of the uh, health, the impact of the health of SO2 on the human health. So basically they reduce it basically from 1990s to almost 2005, they reduce it in average between 35 to 37 percent. Okay. Now, uh, you follow this point. I'm just going to mention to you here now what you call, uh, what are basically the reduction. Okay. As I mentioned, uh, just to put it in a summarized way here, that in most, industrialized nations to try to reduce SO2 emission okay uh, due to its effects on human health and also other organisms, of course, in there. Now, so as I mentioned, uh, uh, thus, basically from, say, 1990s to almost 2005, emission of SO2, okay, uh, had been reduced uh, by average of 35% to 37%, all right? Now, and this has been achieved okay, by several methods. Means the detections of SO2. This has been achieved by several methods, okay? I'm going to mention this point, I'm going to read it for you because I think hopefully it's easy to understand. It's not okay, about three or four. I'm going to mention one, okay? This method. Are you following me okay, please? Okay, now one, Basically, of course, switching, switching to low or no sulfur fuel. Switching, of course, from to low or no sulfur fuel for some major uses, for some major uses. especially for electricity generation. So basically they either, they reduce or no use basically. So to, okay, switches to low or no sulfur fuel for some major uses, especially for electricity generation. Now this is one, Thing. But switch what you call sulfur from some fuels, removing sulfur from some fuels prior to combustion, 
removing sulfur from some fuel prior or before consumption, mostly by coal washing. So in other words, they try to remove the sulfur before it's used, and they did that basically by the coal washing. Okay. This is so. So this is the th second technique they used. The third technique is being used basically simply reducing energy demands. This is another method here. The fourth one, which is known as introducing what you call or installing scrubbers. This is known as scrubbers. And these scrubbers, as a matter of fact, to remove the sulfur. So installing scrubbers, scrubbers to remove SO2 okay, reducing scrubbers, okay, to remove SO2, okay, from what is known as post-combustion waste gases to remove SO2 from post combustion from post combustion wastes gases okay before they are vented Okay, to the atmosphere. Okay, so as you mentioned, uh, these are the what you call uh, the four type of technique being used to reduce what you call this uh, uh, SO2 emission. One, it was basically switching to low or no sulfur fuel, basically for major uses such as electricity generating. The other one, as a matter of fact, removing sulfur from the fuel prior or before combustion by what most mentioned by coal washing. The third one was basically by reducing energy demand. And the fourth one, the technique was installing scrubbers in which basically to remove sulfur dioxide from post convention waste gases before they are vented to the atmosphere. Is that clear? Okay. So now basically going to have another title here. Uh, okay. Uh, to talk about, now this is, pay attention, this is sulfide here. Now, sources of sulfide emission. Okay. Uh, now, sulfide, as a matter of fact, something it is basically what happened here, which is um, opposite to the um, to the SO2. Okay, it is mostly nitrogen to mention here. In contrast, to SO2 that most global 
that most global emissions of sulfide gases okay are from basically natural sources okay Now, if you mention some of these uh, uh, sources here, okay. Now, the largest okay, uh, sources are H2S emitted. Okay, from anoxic sediments. Sediments, basically in shallow marine. In shallow marine and inland waters. and inland waters, okay, and also to measure and dimethyl sulfides, okay, produced by phytoplanktons okay and also and gassed out and out gassed okay from oceanic water Uh, now, basically, to mention here, okay, that about uh, the natural, uh, for your information, that uh, the natural emission, okay, of H to S, okay, uh, about, okay, hundred million tons per year, okay, and the other one we took about the dimethyl sulfide and dimethyl sulfides, Okay, about uh, 15 million tons per year. Okay, that's basically from the natural sources of this one here, okay?
Uh, also, uh, don't mention about uh, uh, sulfide. Basically, as a matter of fact, is mostly it come from the nature, but also sometimes also it is has anthropogenic. We we'll talk about that a little bit here. Okay. I'll follow this one here. Now, just to mention to you that uh, the uh, basically anthropogenic. Okay. Emission. Of. H2S. About. Three million tons per year. Okay. And basically, the source of that mostly, okay, and are mostly. Uh, the uh, the source of that is uh, from chemical industries from chemical industries and also and the other thing and sewage treatments And sewage treatments, and the last thing, and also we call live stock manures and live stock stock manures. Okay. Before that, please, any question, please, or any miss anything, just let me know. Now, basically, subtitle we're going to talk about here, okay, just, uh, okay, uh, toxicity of silver gases. Subtitle now here. Did you finish on this one? If you finish, then I put it down here. Okay. And you have here subtitle. Uh, toxicity. Of. Uh, sulfur. Gases. Okay. Uh, uh, Sometimes, of course, we talk about this one basically to see the impact of this on a plant, and later also we see, but uh, in this case, also a human. Okay, to talk about that. Just give me a second here. Okay. Now, what they're going to mention to you here, that concentration okay, that concentration of H2S, it depends of course, of H2S in the environment. Okay, are really 
typically high enough okay uh, to be toxic to plants okay Of course, what happened here, this is, of course, in general we talk about, but of course, near the, the industrial scene. Now, to mention this one, in contrast, okay, uh, concentration, okay, concentrations of SO2 in cities and near industrial sources. Sources are often high are often high enough, okay, are often high enough, of course, uh, to injure wild and cultivated plants. and cultivated plants. And that, of course, as you remember, if you can see, for example, if you go near the smelter area, even here, okay, near smelter, okay, near the smelters. Okay. This one. near the smelters, okay, uh, are often high enough to injure its wild and cultivated plants near smelters, okay? Now, now usually they find this basically to have this statistic to mention, okay? Uh, for example, an exposure to uh, 0.7 part per million of SO2, okay, for one hour okay basically this is will result okay, will result in acute injury an acute injury to most plants. That even at 0.7 parts per million, okay? Well, of course, at lower concentration, if it's long time also will cause that. However, to me as well, as also, basically at 0.2 part per million over say an eight hour exposure okay also cause damage to plants. Okay. 
But of course, sometimes even at lower, it depends on a plant species. Some plant species could be more sensitive than the others and so on. Okay. Uh, the other thing to mention to you here, basically, that a human and most animals okay, are much less, in general, of course, are much less sensitive Okay, to SO2 than plants, okay, that plants are, okay. And that's why basically it is recommended Okay. Means for human and animals, it's when did that? It's when did that exposure to SO2. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, should be no higher, okay, than two part per million over a long term over. long term and no higher than five part per million for shorter exposure. Okay. Did you follow this? Okay. Now, basically, this is we talk. We cover some area about what you call about the sulfur from. Now, we're going to talk about the nitrogen gases. Okay. So, title here. Nitrogen gases. Do you see this well? Because I don't know, the reflection of the sun is not affecting you, I guess, huh? Because I have the sun coming from this side. All right. Now, uh, to mention basically that some of these gases which are the most important. First of all, we're going to mention this point here, uh, that uh, the most important of the nitrogen, okay, first of all, the most important okay of the nitrogen okay containing gases are Threat to make Now we have basically one is known as nitric oxide. Okay, which is basically in this case is NO. Okay, and also we have basically nitrogen dioxide.
okay. N O two. And also we have the other one also known as nitrous oxide. Okay, which is basically N2O. Okay, and also, of course, we have ammonia. Which is, as you know, basically an, an H3, sorry. Sometimes also an H4, okay. Now, and sometimes, to mention to you here, okay, and sometimes the nitric oxide, which is NO, and nitrogen dioxide, which is NO2, okay, are often, okay, are often considered, okay, together, sometimes together, as a complex, N O X. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the production of, of these gases. Do you follow this point here, please? Okay. Uh, and try to point basically each one of them, of these guys, but at the moment, just to mention what are the basically the nitrogen gases, okay, which we talk about nitric oxide, then nitrogen dioxide, then nitrous oxide and ammonia. And also we mentioned that the nitrogen oxide and, and uh, nitrogen dioxide usually they form what to call a complex known as NOx. Did you follow this? Now we're going to take some, some of the sources, still I have some time here. Now, of course, we have, first we want to admit that ammonia, which is already, you know, basically is a kind of a colorless type of gas, okay? Usually this is most of the time in nature, okay? Gas is emitted Okay, to finish with this one, I'm going to put it here. Okay, I'm just going to, basically it is opposite. Basically from wetland, nature. Okay. Put dash here from wetlands. Okay. And most of course being produced as a matter of fact, due to the anaerobic decomposition. So ammonia gas is emitted from wetlands, okay, uh, where it is okay, uh, produced okay, during okay, anaerobic Okay, decomposition. Which is basically of the, what you call, of dead biomass. Okay. And uh, simply to mention basically that in nature, we call the, what you call, the natural emission of ammonia. is about, or are about basically uh, one 
billion uh, tons per year. Okay. Uh, to make this point here, basically, just a few lines. Of course, there is what you call the anthropogenic source. Or sources in this case, or source in general, okay. Uh, we have two things. We have basically the one uh, from uh, uh, fossil fuel combustion. Okay. And that basically give us about 4 million uh, tons uh, per year. Okay. And also we have the other one known as animal husbandry. Okay, which is not much, is as about 0.2 million tons per year. Okay. Okay. Now the other point I'm going to mention in general here, that one point that the residence of this. Uh, of the ammonia in the atmosphere is about a uh, few days, about seven days, and after that is going to change into basically to uh, to oxide to to nitrate. And to make this point here now, the these important to know of these gases because sometimes we're going to talk about the green greenhouse gases and so on and the climate change. It's important to know these of these factors. Now the we call the residence time. Okay, of NH3 or ammonia in the atmosphere okay uh, is about seven days. is about seven days, okay. And eventually, okay, oxidized okay, to nitrate. Okay. Did you follow this? Well, this is basically I'm going to, uh, sorry about this, to, uh, uh, to end my lecture now here, okay? And of course, these guys basically most of the time we have to, uh, are you, can you follow, it's okay? Uh, able to understand well? Well, maybe after revising it, I don't know, okay? Any more question, please? Okay. Okay, then I guess I'm going to end my lecture at the moment and wish you all good luck. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Take care away. Bye.